What's up everyone, my name is Nathan and welcome to Hale. So the year 2019 is a pretty significant year when it comes to movies. This is the end of another decade of films, 2010 to 2019, this is 10 years of movies, including 2010 of course, and I wanted to take the chance of just looking back at all the movies that have come out during these past 10 years. We've gotten a lot of great movies, some of which are some of my favorite movies of all time. And so this is a start of a mini series that I will be doing where every few weeks I will be releasing my top 10 movies from each year starting in 2010 and then by the end of the year I will release my top 10 movies of 2019 and then I'll do a top 10 movies of the 2010s. But as for this video it's going to be my top 10 favorite movies from the year 2010. And I was excited to visit 2010 again. In fact it also gave me a little bit of motivation to watch those 2010 movies that have been on my watch list for so long and I've had no desire to watch them but now that I'm making this list might as well knock them out. If there's a movie that doesn't make the list and you're curious about it, just leave your comments in the comment section below and I'll let you know if I've seen it or not. Starting the list out at number 10 is Let Me In. Let Me In was one of those movies that had been on my watch list for a long time, but I just kept prolonging to watch it. My initial interest in this movie was that Matt Reeves directed it. And if you're unfamiliar with who Matt Reeves is, he also directed Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, as well as Cloverfield. However, I haven't seen Cloverfield yet, but I absolutely love the Planet of the Apes films. And so I went into this movie with pretty high expectations and it didn't really disappoint. It's definitely a slower moving horror film, but that doesn't hurt the movie at all. Cody Smith McPhee gives an amazing performance. I really enjoyed this new perspective of vampires and I think Matt Reeves, he's going places. I'm excited for his new Batman movie. If you look at his filmography on IMDb, he hasn't really had a bad movie yet. All of his movies have had good critic scores and he's doing well. Number nine goes to one of two DreamWorks movies on this list and that is Megamind. I remember seeing Megamind in the theaters and going into to it with very low expectations. For crying out loud, I was in junior high and I still had low expectations for a DreamWorks movie. I should have been thriving at this age. I should have been looking forward to it. But for whatever reason, I thought it looked really stupid. And I got out of it very satisfied. It is a hilarious DreamWorks movie. And to this day, it's still pretty quotable too. Like there's that iconic line from Metro Man where someone in the audience says, I love you, Metro Man. And he responds, I love you too, random citizen. The other day I was like in a cafeteria getting food and this guy was like, hey, where's the pizza? And I was like, oh, it's over there. And he's like, thank you, random citizen. People are still quoting Megamind. You know, actually, now that I think about it, that wasn't the direct quote from Megamind, but you know, we were on the same page. And then Space Daddy is so iconic. I mean, come on. When I was serving my mission, there was a guy I met that like he embodied Space Daddy. He looked like Space Daddy and he also kind of had a lisp that sounded like Space Daddy. That man was amazing. Number eight goes to Scott Pilgrim versus the world. This movie is so freaking zany, so freaking crazy. I love it on so many levels. It is absolutely hilarious and preposterous at the same time. The humor is very fast paced. You have to pay attention to the movie to understand all the jokes and to catch all the little jokes. Simple humor moments that are just laugh out loud moments is when Scott is looking for Ramona at the party and he like pulls the paper and he's like, have you seen a girl that looks like this? And the guy's like, yeah, that's Ramona Flowers. It's like, how would anyone gather from that terrible drawing that that's freaking Ramona Flowers? And then at one point, there's a character who dyes her hair. She gets punched in the face and the dye from her hair flies out. Like, that's not even possible. But it is now because Scott Pilgrim, right? I could honestly spend a long time just talking about all the funny scenes from Scott Pilgrim versus the world. The only reason this movie is not higher on the list is because you understand the plot that Scott Pilgrim has to defeat uh, Ramona Flowers' evil exes. And so as you're watching it, you're mentally counting, okay, there's one X, there's two two X's, three and four X's down. And it kind of drags on because you know that there's X amount of X's left to still be defeated. And for me personally, it just kind of dragged on towards the end. At number seven, we've got the best picture winner for this year, The King's Speech. Now The King's Speech was one of those movies that I hadn't seen and I watched it in preparation for this video. And I'm so glad I finally watched it because it is a very good movie. Colin Farrell, that's his name, it's Colin Firth. So on YouTube, they have the real speech by King George VI. And it is, if you compare that speech to Colin Firth's performance of the speech, they are practically identical. His performance is amazing. Jeffrey Rush also did a great job as the speech mentor. And it was also interesting just seeing Jeffrey Rush's character's patience with the king. It's just a solid movie that you can't help but enjoy. And on a quick side note, a little bit disclosure, I don't like viewing R-rated movies unedited. And so any movie that you see on this list that's rated R, or any movies on future lists that are rated R, I watch them filtered through either VidAngel or ClearPlay or on TV, just throwing that out there. I know I'm gonna get some comments as to why I do that. It's just the way I was raised. It's something that I'm used to and it's not anything that I want to 
change. And that's my decision. That's something I'm comfortable with. And I'm grateful to all my followers who have accepted that thus far. Anyways, moving on to number six, we've got the second DreamWorks film on this list, and that is How to Train Your Dragon. I actually watched this movie fairly recently in preparation for How to Train Your Dragon 3, and I was just reminded of how amazing this film is. It's one of those movies where you just fall in love with the characters. The bond between Hiccup and Toothless is just amazing. And I'd say my favorite scene of this whole movie is the test flight scene, where Hiccup first flies Toothless for the first time, and it plays that iconic How to Train Your Dragon score. I think that score is actually called Test Flight, but it's just that music that's triumphant and it literally makes you want to fly a dragon. Just like many other DreamWorks movies, it's just a funny movie too. There are a lot of jokes and a lot of character personalities that you're introduced to that are just hilarious. You just enjoy watching it. Number five, we've got another animated movie this time from Disney and that is Tangled. Tangled is one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. The fact that Tangled wasn't nominated for best animated feature, I think it's one of the biggest Oscar snubs of all time. If you look at the movies that were nominated for best animated feature that year, they were all deserving of the nomination. It was Toy Story 3, How to Train Your Dragon, and The Illusionist. But those are only three nominees. They could have easily thrown in another nomination for Tangled. And Tangled didn't even have to win Win, but it should have been nominated as one of the best animated movies because it really was. It was one of the best animated movies of 2010. But anyways, I See the Light is one of my favorite Disney songs ever. And speaking of that song, the scene that it takes place in, the floating lantern scene, is absolutely stunning. I mean, for that scene alone, it should have been nominated for best animated feature. If you guys couldn't tell, I really like Tangled. <laughs> Alright, so coming in at number four, we've got Toy Story 3. This was the end to an era of growing up with Toy Story movies. It was such a solid conclusion to their lives. And I recognize that Toy Story 4 is coming out, but at the time we thought that this was the conclusion to Woody's and Buzz and Jesse's lives. I loved the whole entire tagline of when this movie was coming out. The tagline was, no toy gets left behind. They're all in this together. It was great. The whole escape plan from Sunnyside is super entertaining to watch. And then obviously the furnace scene is one of the most emotional scenes in Disney history. Definitely Pixar history, Disney history, really film history. That scene in the furnace where they all just embrace hands knowing that they, they're they most likely gonna die, that is, that is powerful. I remember being in the theater looking over at my mom and she was just bawling. It was a great movie and it very much deserved the Best Picture nomination it got. Coming in at number three, we've got The Social Network. The Social Network is a movie that is stupidly good. Like when you look at the plot to The Social Network, it shouldn't be as good as it is, but somehow it is. <laughs> a pretty simple movie plot. Some college kids create a social media app, call it the Facebook, but there's so much more to it than that. It's being in that college setting, being in Harvard with them, seeing the struggles of business, seeing the struggles of friends and enemies. I love the tagline of the movie. I'll read it right now. You don't get to 500 million friends without making a few enemies. That is the perfect tagline for this movie. Andrew Garfield was also snubbed for an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. A scene where he confronts Mark, like slams his laptop on the ground and everything. Best scene of the whole movie. Like sometimes I'll just like look that scene up on YouTube and just watch that scene and then like carry on with my life. It hits you hard. You know that they're friends and their friendship is crumbling because of Facebook. And I've heard several times that the movie's not accurate at all to the true story. That doesn't bother me. I recognize that they're two very different stories. I still love the movie for entertainment value. Number two goes to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one. And this is my favorite Harry Potter movie in the entire Harry Potter franchise and so of course it was going to make the list. I've dived pretty deep in previous videos like my Harry Potter movie ranked video of why I love this movie so much but to just give a brief explanation I love it because it's scary watching the characters on the run not knowing whether they're going to be captured or not and also I feel like it's the darkest entry in the Harry Potter movie series. It's like the only movie that doesn't really take place at Hogwarts like out all. And for whatever reason, as much as I love Hogwarts, I like that about this movie. Dobby's death is super depressing. And one of my favorite things about this movie is their visit to Godric's Hollow. You see an emotional side to Harry that you haven't really seen before where he grieves the death of his parents at their grave site. It's slow at times, but it's slow when it needs to be. And when it's slow, it doesn't bore me. I'm, I'm still hooked to the movie. And my number one movie of 2010, also one of my favorite movies of all time, goes to Inception. What can I say about this movie that hasn't already been said? It's just, it's amazing. It's a masterpiece. Like, I'll listen to the score of this movie, and I'll just get chills because of how powerful it is. The plot is so complex, but at the same time, you understand it so well. But at the same time, when I'm watching it, I feel like I notice something new with each viewing. And the song that they use in the movie to wake each other up, it's that French song. I'm going to butcher this hardcore. It's called like Non Je Ne Regret Rayon. I don't know. It's by Edith Piaf. It's this one. But fun little fact, if you slow down that song, 
That's the same music that plays at the beginning of the movie. And Hans Zimmer purposely did that. Actually, for one of my classes last semester, we watched this movie and then we analyzed it. We spent an entire class period just analyzing this film. And I learned a lot of cool things from it. Well, and there you guys have it. My top 10 movies from the year 2010. So let's look at the year in review real quick. There were zero movies that I gave a 1 out of 10 to. So that's good. Out of the 34 movies that I saw, 6 of the movies I gave 10 out of 10s. And if I were to describe the year 2010, I would call it the year for animated movies. Because if you couldn't tell from my list, there were a lot of great animated movies this year, and a lot of which I really liked. And after finding the average of all my ratings for the year, the average rating of the year 2010 was a 7.32 out of 10. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching and be on the lookout for the second video in this series, my top 10 movies of 2011. And I know it's a throwback, but leave your comments below on what your favorite movies of 2010 were. Thanks for watching. Get the hail out.